Hey friends, welcome to Boca, a podcast exploring the ever blurring lines between the personal and business lives of professional photographers. This is your host, Nathan Holritz, and I'm bringing you a special episode of the Boca podcast today called Workflow Wednesday. During these special edition episodes, myself and my co-hosts will focus on helping you develop more efficient daily and weekly workflows around post-production, communication, task and project management, time management, file and image management, and yes, the list does go on. We're going to save you an incredible amount of time in your work week, and we promise not to be too nerdy. This podcast is brought to you by Photographer's Edit, custom image editing for the wedding and portrait photographer. Visit photographersedit.com. And now we are live. Okay, all right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Workflow Wednesday. Um, it's been... Hey! Yeah, hey, Haley and Rich and Heather. Thank you guys for hanging out today. And hello to all of you watching and to those listening at the Book of Podcast, B-O-K-E-H podcast.com. Uh, for those of you list- are watching live uh, or even just after the fact on the video, you can hear all of these Workflow Wednesday episodes along with... Uh, the other episodes that we, we normally put out an episode a week on Mondays, and then we do the workflow Wednesday episodes. We'll put a couple episodes out a week and you can see and listen to see those, listen to those <laughs> in audio format at uh, bocapodcast.com. So I'm throwing that up on the screen here really quickly so you can see that. But uh, how has everybody been? How's your week been? <laughs> do you want to be honest? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Heather, I know last week was, was a little bit of a tough spell. What, has it, have things gotten any better? Uh, what was the test spell? Well, last since week? last week, our air conditioning's gone uh, out, yeah, so yeah, there's yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, we've been well, out without AC for two days now, and um, it's not going to get fixed till tomorrow. So, yeah. so and we can, just thought that you had this really cool look with your yes. hair like blowing in the wind, but <laughs> yes. apparently you have a fan blowing. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry if that's a distraction. My <laughs> hair is blowing in the wind, but I'm I think it's better than sweating and looking totally haggard for today's video. So <laughs> it, feels, it feels good with, with the wind blowing directly, but if I go <laughs> even like this right here. It, it's it's pretty, it's pretty hot really quickly. Uh, so yes yeah. not to mention of course the natural hotness that rich brings to the room heather There's that. I, I, yeah maybe i just need to sit a little bit further away from you because i'm just so close to you oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man i love it well um Haley, how has your week been are you i don't see wind blowing your hair back air conditioning is great at my house yeah. <laughs> so, don't brag don't brag <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, no, I I don't have any heat issues here, but look yeah, at, look at this money bags over there with the AC. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You didn't ask about my air conditioning. Uh, uh, yeah. So now we're going to spend the first five minutes of the uh, the podcast and uh, Facebook live session talking about air conditioning. What air was conditioning. the one that I think we got stuck on a weird topic another time? Too. Batteries. 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 That's what it was. Okay. In a loop. In a loop. All right. Well, moving on. Um, for those of you not familiar, of course, with Workflow Wednesday, we do talk about that very topic, workflow, and more specifically, how to create an efficient workflow as photography business owners uh, so that we can have our life back, so we can have a little bit more time to do something besides sit in front of or behind a computer. And um, so that's the that's the theme. That's the focus. And each week, we dive into a topic uh, around this idea of workflow this week. And actually, probably for the next couple, two or three weeks anyway, we're going to delve into this topic of outsourcing because, oh, by the way, um, <laughs> we are produced by Photographer's Edit. And, you know, as much as we laugh about it, it's not something that we actually talk about a whole lot. The last thing, of course, that I want for the podcast or the show uh, to feel like is a, um, a, a commercial for PE. That is definitely not what this is uh, meant to be on a, on a grander scale. So, um, what what we are going to do though in the next couple of weeks, first of all, is talk about a little bit of the philosophy that drives this concept of outsourcing your editing because it's uh, I know it's a big big ask for photographers. You're giving up your baby. It's very personal, and um, it certainly costs a little bit of cash to make it happen as well. So, we're going to talk a little bit about the philosophy that drives outsourcing editing. And the next week, we'll get into the more specific workflow tied to photographers edit. And, um, and so we're going to get to this topic here in just a second, but I, I love small talk and uh, I'm sure everybody else loves at least a little bit of it. It feels a little bit more real. I, I don't uh, particularly enjoy doing a highly produced show. So um, I want to get back to, to, well, just general conversation. And, and by the way, I'm going to throw up Rich and Heather's website here on the screen, Rich and Heather 
richmouthphotography.com or .net, uh, whichever way you prefer. <laughs> and then, um, and then <laughs> Haley, of course, HaleyGaffin.com. Um, Rich and Heather are photographers in the Chattanooga area. And then, of course, Haley and I are also in the Chattanooga area. Haley not only heads up digital marketing for Photographers Edit, but also runs a, a branding uh, company and as a photographer, she's got her hands full, a lot going on. And uh, so you can check out those websites as well. Um, I'm curious, this is a totally random question. I didn't even tell you guys about this ahead of time, but what is something that is has inspired you in the last week? Something you heard, read, saw, experienced, anything in oh, particular wow. jump to mind? Um, AC, AC definitely inspires me now. Um, <laughs> cool, cooler air. <laughs> um, uh, what has inspired? or even just something that, that grabbed your attention um, my, that, seemed, that seemed worth acting oh. on or, or at least sharing? Hmm. Yeah, I've been, I've been reading this book called um, um, Goliath Must Fall, um, and uh, it's a great it's a great book um, by uh, this, uh, this pastor in and in, uh, in Atlanta uh, called Louis Giglio, and um, but it's a um, it's a it's a great uh, book um, that I've been really really learning a lot, and I'm like this is great. So. Uh, um, it's a, it's so, kind of an enticing title. Can you give us the the like one sentence synopsis? What what is it oh, about? I don't know. There is a um, it's I don't know. If there is a particular. I it's like kind of about taking that learning to defeat the things that threaten to kind of control our lives. Yeah, I mean, basically, like the whole idea behind it is that we invite things in our in our own lives um, that that uh, that um, at first comfort size. It, a bit, he, he tells a story in there where, where um, a, a lady who was, who uh, got, uh, was killed by her pet tiger. And, um, and uh, it basically, he said, uh, uh, when, when she first got this, this tiger, it was, a, it was a, a cub. It was very, it was very small. It was manageable. It was cute. They bought, she bonded with it. It gave her comfort. And, but over time, this, this thing that once gave her comfort became a man eating tiger, you know, like, and, uh, and pretty soon uh, with, with it just with, it became what, it you know, the, the, the gloves came off the, you know, the, the mask came off and, and, it became what it really was. And so basically her undoing. And, yeah, the undoing. So so basically the whole idea behind it is that like we we invite things in our in our lives that 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 at first it, it like Goliath, you know, and David and Goliath, he was a nine foot, you know, tall giant, but he didn't start off that way. He started off as a baby. It, it, I mean he he didn't come, you know, grow and so and so he was he was helpless. He he and the, but pretty soon he was this this huge giant that was very, very intimidating. And, that, and that's basically the whole premise of like, of like finding those giants in our lives that we've invited in. And, but now they've, cru they, they're crushing us. We lost control. We, we don't have control over that. that person. So are you, are, are you still there, Haley? You're. Oh, oh, we lost, we, we lost Haley there for oh, a second. No. Right. I think she said something about coming back, but uh, we'll, okay. we'll 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 bring her back in as soon as yeah. we can. In the meantime, um, thanks for sharing the the yeah. book, and of course, yeah, we'll make sure to link to it in the show notes for those of you yeah. who are curious. Um, yeah. It is an interesting thing to think about those uh, what seems like so something so innocent at the time. Mm -hmm. These ideas, these concepts, that things, actual physical things that we invite into our lives, or maybe relationships mm -hmm. that ultimately. Uh, have a harmful effect on our life. And uh, I'm sure that's a philosophical discussion that we could yep. spend a whole couple of two or three <laughs> oh, yeah. episodes on and speak from personal experience. But oh, yeah. um, thanks for sharing that. Also, yeah. side note, don't buy a tiger. It's probably not a good yeah, idea. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> hey, yeah, that, that's that's the number one thing I've learned so far from the, from the book is, <laughs> is, is don't buy tigers. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. We're, we're pretty good with that. So, okay. we're good, we're so good, far, so good. So good. So far, yeah. so good. So yeah. good. Okay. Yeah. Well, nice. um, I, I'll just very quickly share. This is kind of random, but um, it's been particularly impactful this week. I was listening to a, a podcast interview with uh, between Joe Rogan. I, I listen to Joe Rogan's podcast on and off anyway, quite a bit, and I have for for years. It's an interesting format, um, and certainly one that I found inspiration from just as a podcast host. Because one thing that Joe does, if nothing else, is be himself, and it sounds kind of obvious, maybe even. But the reality is that, as I just alluded to earlier, there's a tendency, and whether it's a TV show or a podcast or anything else, that people have of a, overly producing it, and it feels very robotic and canned, and, and uh, you don't feel like you're actually getting to connect with the real individual. Mm -hmm. And um, so Joe does that really, really well. And to that point, actually, he had Elon Musk on, oh, on yeah. his show. 
And it was a really interesting conversation for, for multiple reasons. Um, but somebody pointed this out, and, and forgive me, I don't remember his name right the second, but somebody pointed this out uh, online, I think it was on Twitter, that or the significance of these longer form conversations, uh, because we have a tendency in, in our culture these days to just you know be scrolling through Facebook, basically, literally and figuratively, scrolling through information very quickly, looking for little sound bites or little headlines, grabbing that and running with it. We don't really actually fully understand the context of the conversation. Right. And, um, you know, Elon's created quite a bit of drama in the last two or three months. Um, and understandably so. I mean, there's reason that people have to to kind of call him out for that. Flip side of that, though, it was really interesting to actually get a chance to feel like you were actually connecting um, not connecting per se, but getting to know him on a little bit more personal level through these mm -hmm. conversations. It was also a good reminder in conjunction with that, too, that we can't make, and he actually made this point at the end of the episode, we can't make assumptions of people. We need to give them the benefit of the doubt, take the time to actually get to know them. It looks like I'm freezing up, too. Am I freezing up? You did there for a second, but you're back. Okay. Yeah. And, yeah. and I, I think uh, it doesn't look like a Haley's back in yet either. So there may be some tech issues with our, um, our hosting software. I'm not sure what's going on. Wait, we, have, we have no AC, but our, our internet is great. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, anyway, so that, that was just kind of the, the highlight. And we'll link to that episode in the show notes as well. Um, it, it's, it's certainly not a, a podcast for everyone, um, but mm -hmm. It, it is for the sake of conversation and to this point about remembering that, that there's a lot more behind the scenes of whether it's a political conversation mm -hmm. or philosophical or religious conversation or just an individual who might be highlighted in social media or in the news or otherwise, that there's a lot more behind the scenes. We have to keep that in mind yeah. and not jump to conclusions that I thought that was a really good yeah. uh, reminder. All right. It looks yeah. like we have Haley. She is back. Oh, Let good. me bring her back to our conversation here. Yeah. We'll try it. There she is. I want to know what inspired know. her. I don't know what happened. <laughs> you well, just disappeared. <laughs> we've we've got you back here. So we're gonna we're gonna keep moving just for the sake of time. I, yeah. I was just sharing briefly um uh an experience that I had listening to a podcast episode this week. I'll let you go back and listen to it. I know you can't wait. <laughs> um, but uh, the other the other kind of random question that I had for you guys, and I actually posted this on my Instagram stories today, and I haven't posted on stories for a long time. Haley actually responded earlier, and I appreciate that, Haley. And I got responses um, from other people as well. But I'm curious to get your take on Instagram stories and whether or not they are actually valuable to our not only our personal lives, but to our business. And or, or are they just kind of another distraction, a thing that we do because everybody says that we're supposed to do it. But at the end of the day, there isn't actually tangible value from it, whether it's for the sake of our personal lives or yeah. our brand. I'm curious to get your take. And I know you guys aren't ex extremely active, Rich and Heather, on Instagram, on, on the, the business side of Instagram anyway. But um, I know that, Heather, you, you're relatively active on your personal Instagram. Uh, and so I just wanted to kind of get you guys' take on this. Maybe we can start with you again, Rich and Heather. Uh, yeah, you did mention that I'm fairly active on personal on the personal side for Instagram. And the reason for that is because I use a service called Chatbooks. It's a subscription-based service. And my main priority, we have to decide why we're engaging on social media because it's something that is it's something we're giving our time to. And the older Rich and I get, the more intentional we want to be with our lives and our time and the decisions that we're making. So I don't do it to impress people. I don't post the prettiest pictures always. What my main intention is to document our memories for the sake of printing that, you know, with this automatic subscription we have with chat books. And so these books come, you know, every so often, maybe once a month in the mail and the kids like childhood, their lives are being documented in that way, simply because I can't stand having everything only be digital. So for me, there would be absolutely no benefit for spending additional time and posting on stories. Um, because again, I know what my priority is with posting on social media in the first place. And that doesn't fit into something that is a priority for me. So no, I don't want anything else to take more time away from my kids and my efforts homeschooling and my efforts running a business that isn't going to directly impact and benefit us in a positive way. So that's the short answer for me. I yeah, know I, I probably represent a, a bunch of people, but, but not everybody. So yeah, I'm sure there could be I, arguments made. I actually read a uh, read an article um, that that um, there is a, a slight movement. I'm not sure if it's going to get get feet to it, but there are a, a a group of people that are much younger who are starting to kind of get the understanding or becoming tired of always always having to compare themselves to other people because everybody put their best foot forward on, on social media. 
And uh, a lot of a lot of them are kind of just getting tired, just like the, the tired tired of just like always having to be on um, posting stuff, trying to basically impress the people, these strangers that, and then they're not finding any satisfaction in it. Um, there, uh, ultimately, it doesn't bring any. There's a lot of studies that are showing that it increases people's anxiety mm -hmm. and dissatisfaction levels with life. I mean, yeah. social media in general can. Yeah. So yeah. I feel like it's well, a, just just to be fair, I'll, I'll comment on that very quickly. I mean, a lot yeah. of it has to do with baseline psychology, personal psychology, right? With, yeah. with where we're at with our, yeah. our own selves, uh, security mm -hmm. or insecurity right. um, is, is represented there very obviously. But it is it has certainly been a point of conversation. Yeah. But, I, but, you know, Heather, you you so beautifully articulated I think um, a, a, a mentality approach to social media, which a lot more of us could stand to uh, embrace because it is one thing to, to get out there and just kind of post for the sake of posting uh, mm -hmm. because it's the thing to do, right. uh, you know, because Gary Vaynerchuk does it and says that we should do it or whatever it might be. <laughs> yeah. But at right. the end of the day, if there is no direct benefit to, again, our personal lives or our business, um, then what, what is the point? And I think people are beginning to maybe ask that question a little bit more. Yeah. The cool thing and the reason that you can answer that question for yourselves, you're very clear about what it is that you're trying to achieve. And I think that's where a lot of us fall short is we're not really clear about the direction that we're trying to go. So it makes sense for the time being just to go ahead and do what everybody else is doing and maybe something will stick or maybe something will work and maybe it won't. Um, but you're very clear about what you want and you act accordingly. And that's, that's wonderful. I, I love that you make that point. Haley, what are your thoughts? I know that you had kind of a, a slightly different perspective that you shared with me earlier. Yeah. So um, as far as watching other people's stories, the first thing that I like about it is that with a lot of brands and a lot of businesses, they, you do get to see the, the people behind the scenes, which a lot of companies don't put on their social media feed. Um, so like even my own personal ins Instagram, well, it's a business personal. I don't have two different ones. I just share the same account. A lot of times I will put more of my work on there rather than, um, you know, the coffee I'm drinking this morning, or if someone did something during the day and I want to show it off for my dogs, whatever it might be, it shows that personal, um, aspect of it that you don't truly get from a feed. But then also a lot of um, a lot of photographers that I'm following and a lot of businesses are sharing the companies that they're using. So whether they're using photographers at it or they're using HoneyBook or 17 Hats or whatever, you know, companies that will help build their business up um, or make their businesses more efficient. They're going through and sharing how they're using it, which I find really beneficial um, it's how I've decided what companies I'm going to work with, um, just on their own testimonials. Mm -hmm. So that's really impacted my business in that sense. Um, but mostly it's, it is entertaining. Like you said, in your, your uh, question that you posed, like, is it just for entertainment? And a lot of times it is, but every mm -hmm. so often you, you do get that surprise of, Oh, you know, I didn't know you could upload your photos to this thing or whatever and have your clients build their own album, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. I, you mentioned, or you alluded to the idea of kind of a, a more personal insight into a brand in particular. And, um, that even reminds me that, that I probably could stand to be on our photographer's edit, for example, stories a little bit more often just for the sake of personalization that, Hey, there is a face back here. This isn't just random posts for the sake of marketing. There are mm -hmm. actual people involved here and, and we have a real mission uh, that is meaningful behind the brand. And so, so to that point, I think there's some value to that. And as you said, Haley, it could be that somebody is looking for an editing company or has kind of been on the, um, uh, and then the edge of deciding whether or not to, to outsource their editing or not. And then they see somebody, my face, your face, whoever's face pop up and, and we're talking to them on a very personal level and explaining what the brand's about and the mission. And, and they are somehow able to connect to that. Um, in that sense, I guess specifically there, there might be some value. In fact, not even might, I, I know that there is some value. I guess the flip side of that is I see people posting, I mean, some people are, maybe brands, but probably more individual photographers posting like 15, 20 times a day or even more. And it almost seems like they don't have anything better to do. And I, and I can't imagine that saying, 
hosting 20 times uh, versus five times is actually that much more valuable to their mm -hmm. brand. Other than the fact that I realize it naturally pushes them to, you know, first in the queue um, if they keep posting through the day. What, what are you all's thoughts on that? I mean, do, do you find yourself that much more drawn, Rich and Heather, for example, to a particular brand because you saw their Instagram story um, than not? Or do you already have a clear idea of what you want before you watch an Instagram story? I I, to be honest, I, I just I don't look I don't look at Instagram stories. I just don't. I mean, like mm -hmm. I, I I scroll through the photo, I look at the photos, but but uh, um, I, I guess I, I just got so used to using Instagram as just a, as a photo app that uh, that I I don't I just I, I haven't even taken the time to actually know exactly even how to even look at the stories. Um, I, it confuses me. It confuses me. I'm not sure. I'm like. Wait, 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 wait! I went too fast. I don't know how to get back to what I was looking at. Like, 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 you know, like, you know, like, or I, I don't know how to navigate it very well. I'll I, I, maybe, I, I, I'm, stories I'm just, tomorrow, I, Rich. I, I'm just getting old. Like, that's I know. I think that we've hit on something here, though, because uh, we're in a very different season of life too than Haley. And mm -hmm. when we're in different seasons of life, um, our decisions with what, how to engage, and what to engage it, it can be different. Um, but also we have to, as business owners, leverage our strengths and the things that naturally interest us. So Rich might, Rich is an extrovert and he is not going to get the most satisfaction as a business person out of, um, exploring the nooks and crannies of every facet of social media, because it's not, it's not our gifting. It's not what we want. Like, it's just not a passion. And so can I interrupt you it? for just a second, Heather, yeah. you were talking about him being an extrovert. It seems like that might yeah. actually be a great platform to kind of show his personality. So what's the, um, what's the response to that idea? Or maybe, maybe, show my person, maybe show my personality, but, uh, I don't think I really connect with people, yeah. uh, watching other people's stories, you know, um, you know, yeah. I mean, like yeah, I, 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 I don't get energy from, from watching other people, um, you know, they may entertain me, but I don't, I don't feel more connected to them, nor do I feel more energized on watching them. Um, I think for us, social media is more of a black hole that, it, and, and less of a, like a, something that we're attacking proactively for our business and using every second wisely. You get sucked in, you went on, you logged on to do one thing and then you get distracted by a bunch of other stuff. I don't know. It's just, we, we just, we're in a season where we're, I mean, think about it. We're about to talk about what, how photographers that it's giving us our time back and our life back and allowing us to make more money and take more family vacations. And Instagram stories doesn't fit anywhere in that for us. It doesn't, it's not part of that algorithm. You know what I'm saying? So it may be someday I'm not, it may be, uh, you know, a few weeks from now, we come across some really compelling reason to, yeah, 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 I, you know, we're not saying like we hate Instagram stories. We're just saying that as of this moment, it's not been a critical thing for us, but we do go meet face to face and talk with vendors and build relationships face to face. Like it's just, it's more of who we are. So again, leveraging your strengths. And if something doesn't excite you or make you passionate, I don't think that it's a one size fits all thing. And every business has to fit into a certain mold of engaging with social media on, you know, on a certain level or they can't be successful. I just don't think it's quite that cut and dry. So for us, it just falls flat a little bit, but that's not to say that there aren't seasons in our business where we've done a better job or we'll do a better job mm -hmm. or we'll do more. Or, or, or even be willing to learn, you yeah. know, because I mean, because again, yeah. uh, to me, I feel a little bit overwhelmed, overwhelmed, but if, if someone sat down with me and, and showed me exactly how to do it, what to do, the benefits of it and they, they could change my mind. I just, I'm just, I, I haven't come up. I haven't. Yeah. Um, you well, know, and to that know. point, and we'll kind of close on this. I mean, you, you run a successful photography business that is, that is accomplishing again, the goals that you guys have set out to accomplish. It seems at this point, I mean, you're making a living at least doing, yeah. doing photography, which is really, really yeah. exciting. Not something that everybody can say uh, they're, they're capable of. So, and you're doing that without Instagram stories. And uh, again, <laughs> at, at, barely, you point out, <laughs> as you point out that that doesn't mean that a it's it's bad or that b it may not be effective no. for other people or brands or otherwise but i, I just it was an interesting yeah. conversation to me because it, my my assumption and and again you know one example or one person doesn't then make an argument but um, my my assumption was i mean i got started i got photographers that it started on my personality or not necessarily my personality but me as an individual people knew who i was they knew who my business partner at the time was and that the brand was able to be launched largely based on that reputation. Mm -hmm. And we've continued to build photographers at it based on referral, largely, mostly referrals more than anything else market, uh, you know, uh, 
ads or, or any other kind of marketing, uh, trade shows, conferences, et cetera, has been largely built on relationships, connections with other photographers over the years. And so in, in, in a, an effort to continue to build up our marketing efforts, Haley and I have been collaborating, collaborating extensively for the last year and, and kind of racking our brains to try to figure out how to continue to iterate and change and improve and, and do these things. One of the things that I assumed that I needed to do yet again was to be more personable or personal and put myself out there for the sake of the PE brand. I, I still, people still see Nathan as photographer's edit, at least partially. Yeah. And so I started doing this very proactively, very consistently um, on Instagram. And I was not seeing that translate to results with, with PE. Been there. And, and I've, I've been off of stories now for quite some time and, and we're tracking, we're up to over 20% for the month with PE right now. And obviously I'm just one person. I have a, a wonderful team that is helping make PE happen. Uh, and, and we, this is only one example, but I just found it interesting that, that presence on Instagram stories, despite the fact that at least a portion of our brand rides on, on my face, me being a face of the company, um, me putting myself out there in stories three, four, five, 20 times a day didn't naturally translate to sales. And in right. fact, the opposite was even true. And um, so it was just a point of conversation. I figured I'd put it out there. I don't mind to, to the point that you guys made. I don't mind putting myself out there on stories and I may start doing it again, um, you know, even just a few times a day, then it doesn't distract from anything else that, that um, represent my goals uh, to your point, Heather. Uh, right. But I just, I thought it was an interesting point of conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're, the, the people that you're trying to attract are other photographers. Uh, the people I'm trying to attract is, as young brides. And so I mean, like, again, uh, it, I may, I could probably do the same thing and may get a completely different experience or results. Uh, so because it's just, um, you got, you got to know your audience. You got to know your crowd, you know? So, um, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, mm -hmm. uh, like, like Haley, yeah, I'm sure she could talk for hours on this hours. Well, and, and to that point, and, you know, I mean, to the point that I made earlier too, about this being a team, I I'm, I haven't been on Instagram, but Haley sure as heck has, and has spent a lot of time there and has done a, an incredible job. I've complimented her multiple times. Um, over even just the last few months on just like the quality of what of the work that she's doing on stories. It's so easy to follow, whether it's tied to book a podcast or um, mm -hmm. we're, we're doing um, uh, wedding Wednesdays. We're posting examples of, of our clients wedding work. I mean, just a really, really great job, very organized, very easy to follow, entertaining uh, and helpful as well. And uh, so if you guys are curious, if, if you haven't, and I know we've talked about Instagram and Instagram stories a little bit in past, past Workflow Wednesday episodes, um, and I've, I've mentioned this, but if you're curious to see how somebody uh, does a really, really great job for the sake of their brand on stories, do make sure that you follow Photographer's Edit and see all the work, not only Photographer's Edit, but book a podcast and see all the work that Haley's been doing there. I'll leave it at that. I know that that was kind of aside from our primary photop or topic for today, but it's certainly related to workflow. And I was curious to get you all's take um, to our earlier conversation. Yes, we are going to begin to kind of dive into this topic of outsourcing editing. And I want to make it as practical as possible. And I think the way that we can always do that is to, to get into the philosophy that drives why. I mean, speaking uh, again of this, what drives what we do and our motivation, what our goals are. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the philosophy that drives this idea of outsourcing editing to begin with. Um, and, and maybe Rich and Heather, you guys can talk a little bit about um, what this looked like at the very, very beginning before you ever use photographers edit. And this was years ago, I think when you, when you mm -hmm. first, uh, first did, mm -hmm. was there apprehension uh, going into this process of saying, of, of handing your editing over to someone else? Well, the first point that I think should be made is that early in our business, Rich was spending an inordinate amount of time editing our weddings in Photoshop. Photoshop. Before he my got, room. He, I love him very much, but he got very, very distracted by some of the um, Photoshop actions that were being marketed to photographers at the time textures and other types of gesture rush. <laughs> yeah. Cause sorry. we're talking oh, about sorry, how... sorry. apologize. Yeah. Yes. Great, uh, great guy. Great guy. Great products. Yes. But you were okay. easily distracted by them because they were so great. And that happens I... these days with Lightroom presets for that matter too. I mean, yes. so many different people are marketing their presets. It's, it's, um, it's definitely a distraction. Yeah. So this is in the early days of our business when I was not only not helping Rich with the editing, but I wasn't shooting yet either. I, I didn't really have a big role in the business in the early days. That has that has um, changed over the years. But the amount of time that it would take him 
to edit a wedding. And it was such an overwhelming task because of the amount of time he was spending on individual images in Photoshop that it became this really, um, re we had a horrible turnaround time for our clients in those early days because yes. of the time. So it actually was a huge source of stress for me years, years ago. Not for me. I'm, um, I'm okay with it. So then <laughs> this is before edit existed. Yeah. So yeah. around comes photographers edit. And in those early days, I'll let you speak to. Yeah. I mean, so, so um, it's a whole idea of maturing, growing up. Um, uh, we didn't take business classes. Uh, we, uh, we, we kind of jumped into photography um, and in business without really knowing what we we're doing. Um, and so this whole idea of like, like when, when you, when you're full time and uh, Heather, Heather stayed at home, she helped me with the business. We did this together. I, I mean, like the only source of income was what we, what we brought in from photography, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, um, and so, um, our main thing that we always uh, viewed and to help us sleep at night was our bank account. How much money is in our bank account? So, for, for at the very beginning, um, our bank account or money was more important than our time, um, mm -hmm. because like, um, like we, it, we could. Um, we wanted to make sure we were going to be okay. I mean, these are the early yeah. days of the business. Yeah, we, you know, I'm, I'm sure. We didn't really know exactly how, all the all the ins and outs of marketing and how to grow a business. We just didn't know, and so basically, so the only, of, only, of only thing we knew pushing money out, paying cash for a service when things were were tight as they were. That was that was kind of that was overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just the only only thing we knew. Like like um, the our, the amount of money in our bank account was a simple thing. It's, it's a simple thing to look at and judge. Uh, how we're doing based off on, on that. There's a good, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and so, um, and so, yeah, I mean like that, that's, yeah, we, we just, we made, uh, made, a, made that decision based on that. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. the apprehension wasn't so much the, the, the conversation that I hear a lot of times, obviously as an editing company owner, but then just in, in general out there is, uh, the idea of handing something like image editing over to somebody else. The fear of course, is that, that, is going to be that their brand is going to be misrepresented when somebody else mm -hmm. is editing their images. Yeah. Your concern more so had to do with spending money when things were relatively tight and you were trying to make ends meet. Yeah, I mean that 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 is that's true. That's true. I mean, like a uh, um, again, like uh, marketing, and I I could go use that time that photographer that gave me to go market. I could go go to multiple multiple uh, wedding planners or or whatnot I could do things but that doesn't necessarily guarantee income in the bank you know like uh, like like I, I could connect with that wedding planner they she could uh, possibly uh, send me send, send business my way there's a lot of coulds in there you know um, and so yeah, I mean, do you it, think it was, it's about the coulds, or do you think it's about the lack of immediacy? Because I mean, yeah, we've yeah, talked yeah. before about the significance yes. of networking and how that ultimately mm -hmm. drives business, especially for yeah. wedding photographers. Um, that yeah. because yeah. we don't see it, because you know, we didn't go have coffee with a, a wedding coordinator, and we immediately have three thousand dollars in the bank. Right, right. Um, it's hard to buy into the idea because we're thinking about right now versus three right. months down the road or six months yeah. down the road. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you're looking at different data points. I mean, instead of just looking mm -hmm. at your bank account, you're looking at other aspects and you're adding more data points that are a little more, a lot more hard to um, judge whether or not this is worth it or not. Just like you are looking at data from, mm -hmm. from Instagram stories. Like, like you want to, mm -hmm. you want as a business owner, you want to see data. You want to know, mm -hmm. did this action equate to, more money. I mean, like, or growing them my business or set or satisfaction or something to that effect, you know? And so, yeah. Um, so I feel like return on investment was one of our biggest apprehensions in those early days. Early days. We think very differently now and yeah. we'll get to that, but that for us and, and letting go of the creative freedom was part of it as well. But then again, we're going to talk about that too, how, um, well, let's segue. Edit has, yeah. Let's segue into that since you're on it, Heather. I, I um, just go to town. We're gonna. This is about you guys right now because I mean you've had this experience with photographers edit on and off over an extended period of time. So I'd love for you to go ahead and comment on that when it comes to this idea of handing over your yeah. editing. We 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 addressed the the financial piece of the conversation, and I know that's a major apprehension for a lot of people. Um, the reality is, even though it may not be immediate, 
the investment immediately for the sake of outsourcing editing can translate to more free time, which yes, means that you can spend time with important people in your life. It means you can watch more Netflix, uh, but it also means that you can do things that will actually grow your business, AKA uh, networking in particular. Mm -hmm. But talk to us about the, the editing side and getting a finished product that it would actually represent your brand effectively. Yeah. I mean, like uh, in the beginning, uh, I, I understand what, what you did when you first started Photographer's Edit is that um, you wanted like you want you needed some you needed something out there. Um, the MVP, the min minimum vi viable product, the, the, the stuff um, that would would, you know, start generating you know, cash flow for you. And so um, to me, I, I've enjoyed seeing Photographer's Edit mature. Uh, as a business, just as, as we matured as a business, you know, um, and I, I love how photographer, photographers that it listens, um, and uh, and then and then grows uh, based upon um, the, that feedback. And so, uh, um, so yeah, I mean, like, like for for, uh, for for as as an artist, as a photographer and an artist, I mean, like, there it is really hard to do separate my brand. Um, from the my editing style because that uh, because only that really speaks to me um, and so back in the day photographers edit um, had a, what I think three different like you want uh, traditional editing like you had I think three different styles I think we did um, yeah <laughs> well the thought process speaking of evolution um, the thought process initially the, the only options solutions in the in the industry at the time. Um, were number one extremely expensive, um, mm -hmm. particularly our, our primary competition at that point was extremely. I mean, like six to eight hundred bucks to have a wedding process, mm -hmm. um, but they were also incredibly convoluted, very very complicated. And so the goal was to release a service that was not only affordable to a wider range of photographers, but also much simpler. So to your point, Rich, yeah, we we only had a few options to choose from back then, and that was very. Uh, that was done consciously. Yep. Uh, we have evolved over time because we realize um, that there is a significant need, not only for the sake of brand position, but also because of photographer feedback, a significant need for customization. But yeah, at that time, it was much simpler. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, back in the day, it, it was a little more complicated. You had to actually put there. There was no smart previews from Lightroom. You had to actually um, actually put your your stuff on a hard drive, mail it out, um, and then and you know then they 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 would work on it and then send it back to us. I mean things have complete completely yeah, changed, yeah. completely changed. And I yeah. love that uh, that y'all um, that photographer presented does not uh, isn't stuck in the past or like hey this has worked for years it, it, it continued continue to year but like hey mm -hmm. this is the future we need to embrace it and it's easier it's an easier workflow it's a was an easier workflow it's a e um, better experience for the photographer. Everything kind of like it kind of goes around there. So I mean, like because of that, it's been way more, uh, much more easier. My workflow is a lot more, less complicated mm -hmm. uh, to to uh, get get my, my images to photographers at it, you know. But I think one of the biggest things is that like uh, um, that uh, photographers at it will use my preset now, so they will match uh, very closely my style. So so. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, and we're not talking about some crazy editing like what mm -hmm. he was trying to do back in the early days of the business. Yeah. We've come a long way since then. And we recognize that at the end of the day, as wedding photographers, what our images need to do is stand the test of time and not get distracted all along the way with mm -hmm. all the different trends of editing styles that there are, because that might look horrible, horrible. And you don't want your bride and groom shuddering over the way that their images were edited because that was what would happen to be in style at the time. Yeah. Now I'm not saying that there's not still editing styles and some photographers might prefer more warmth when it comes to temperature or, you know, white balance or whatever. There's definitely going to be preferences and there's room for, you know, creativity in that. But we've, we've definitely, there's no longer any apprehension about photographers edit not being able to reflect our style because mm -hmm we they do and they can and so those images come back to us looking the way that we want them to look and it's true to who we are um it, it's 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 slightly artistic but still um not so crazy that's that that's faddish that it will look bad in, in a um in a couple of years yeah. you know like um yeah and so i mean because do you have I, any concern about 
because you don't have this this ultra ultra artistic style a lot of photographers put so much weight mm-hmm. on the fact that they yeah. at least they, they think that they have a unique style of course the reality is there are thousands and thousands of photographers out there yeah. and it's probably not so unique but mm-hmm. um, they put so much weight on that and say that it's significant for the sake of distinguishing their brand yeah. um, and have you found that that's the case? Like when you went to a, a, a simpler editing style, did you lose business as a result or did you, were you able to not as effectively set yourself apart from other brands as a result? Well, I mean, like, uh, I mean, I, what I did was figured out, um, at, it was almost like meet in the middle. Okay. Because again, I am ultimately an artist. I want to be, I want to love my work because if I don't have satisfaction in my work, then ultimately I'll get burned out and, and not enjoy doing what I do. Mm-hmm. So I understand. I mean, there is a there is aspect, but there was a there was a um, um, there was not compromise. It was just kind of. But I, I wanted to that uh, meet in the middle where like it was artistic, so it, it satisfied my my artistic soul, but it was also timeless um, to the point where uh, um, that I would be sat I would still be satisfied with it. For, for years to come, because again, before I was way over here on the on the pendulum, um, and we've been in this business long enough that like I look back at um, at my old stuff and literally just cringe. I'm like, what was I thinking? You know, yeah. uh, it took me forever to do that, and now like, and like now I hate uh, it. Yeah, and, how, yeah. and I wouldn't put this on on social media, you know, because uh, um, uh, because you know, again, things change, fads change. Um, of styles change, you know, mm-hmm. and so. Uh, but again, what we're trying to do as wedding photographers is give again, like Heather said, give something. We're thinking 20, 30, 50, because these photos are going to yeah. be handed down to from generation to generation. So if, if I do something to my clients, where my clients they love it right now, but just I mean, I mean, like um, I remember this is going to show my age, but I remember in the eighties. And we would do things in the 80s because it was brand new. If we could do it, um, we would like do all these overlays and these gradients and the the and all this kind of stuff. And then we and we we it was amazing. But now in the you know 2018, we look back at it and we like go, that is so we cringe. So. So My favorite, yeah. we were just talking about this. Maybe I was talking about it with you guys. One of the, one of the most hilarious is where you have the, the double exposure. I think my parents had this in their wedding album where like you've got the, the one shot of them standing at the altar and then you have a double exposure of the couple looking over that, <laughs> that, that scene of them standing at the altar, yeah. like gazing yeah. down at yeah. it lovingly. <laughs> yeah. or, the, or, the, or the gigantic head and he's thinking yeah. and like inside the head is like the, 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 the yeah. uh, bride, you know, like she, he's thinking the bride. Oh yeah. My, so, my parents so. have, have uh, the hands yep. and then they're, they're standing in the hands or it's like my dad's hand and my yeah. mom's head. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. So again, like, like yeah. just because you can do it, doesn't mean you should, you know. And so again, like, like I tell my clients uh, when I show them a wedding, pl- when a wedding uh, album is very simple. It, there's, there's no, there's no extra stuff in it, so that, so that, like, like their kids may like make fun of their hair or whatever the style or, or, of dress or, or the style of dress, but they're not yeah. going to make stuff fun of my my photos. They're not going to make fun yeah. of, of that, you know. And I feel like be, we have to be really careful yeah. talking to cuz ultimately when we're having conversation about photography, we're talking to a group of artists mm-hmm. and when we talk it's like the left brain right brain thing. We're t- we're not primarily talking to a group of business people. And I think that what happens when we have these conversations is that um, we, Rich and I start talking about making smart business decisions that will grow our business and allow our business to thrive. And there's like a um, there, there's like something in photographers that wants to push back against being be uh, doing a great job running a business because it's almost they almost treat being a business person and being an artist as if they're mutually exclusive. And I think that that is so not true. And that's where photographers edit is such a relevant topic because we're making a smart decision for our business. Um, our clients 
do not know the difference. We are talking about subtle nuances that an artist could obsess over. And the average onlooker is like, I am connecting with the emotion in this image from my wedding day. They are not noticing tiny little nuances between what photographers said it might produce and what it might look like if we had done it. They simply don't notice, they don't care. And that's not what they're responding to in the images at all. Mm -hmm. And just because we're making a decision that's smart for our business, and we're going to talk more specifically about how that's been so great for us lately. But that doesn't mean that we sacrifice artistic desire and passion and fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Those things are not mutually exclusive. Right. We can we can have both. We can do both. Well, and this is something, it does. And, and you, you again, you communicated that very articulately. But I, I, I think um, you make a really, really great point. And this is something we've talked about before is the idea that art and business aren't mutually exclusive. It's not that being a business owner then means you can't be an artist. And in fact, the cool thing, especially when it comes to this idea of outsourcing editing, but it could be applicable to, to all elements really of our business that we choose to delegate is that it frees us up then to spend more time on the thing or the things that we love. And if, if what you love or part of what you love is the artistic process, well, outsource the editing of 2000 wedding images so that you can then spend extra time on the 20 or 30 or 40 images that might go on the blog or in Facebook or in a wedding album and, and touch them up and process them to your heart's delight. Yeah. But now you don't have to spend an additional three days processing your the, the rest of the proofs that are going to go to the client. The client knows their proofs. They're, they're not expecting to hang 40 by 60s of each of these images on their wall. They're proof images. But I also understand the draw. I mean, hey, I still enjoy editing an image. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it, I understand the draw. And if you want some of that, but you also want to be, you want to manage your time effectively, then then there could be a compromise made there. So have the majority of that busy work taken care of. You handle a little bit of it yourself and enjoy that process. And yeah. to your point again, Heather, it doesn't have to be mutually exclusive. The other thing though, too, and I, I'm, um, I'll just mention this in passing. I don't want to to, to uh, spend too much time on it. But we do have to remember, I alluded to it earlier, the reality, which is that with thousands and thousands and thousands of photographers just in the US market, not to mention the world market, that the notion that our particular editing style is so unique, if we put so much weight on that um, and we're not able to look at the situation objectively, uh, it's going to ultimately drag us down. If for no other reason, then you're just going to end up spending so much time editing your images to quote, get your style. Uh, for the sake of trying to be unique when the reality is down the road, the same, uh, there's three photographers using the same Photoshop actions or Lightroom presets and, and, yeah. you know, adding the dark and moody or the light and airy or whatever the, the thing is that, that's popular at the time, yeah. they're doing that thing. And so the reality is your style may not be so unique. So you've got to figure out other ways to set your business apart. And that goes back to this idea, the significance of experience that you create for your client. And, and again, that idea of spending time and effort and energy on an experience is enabled by freeing yourself up from the busy work. And that, again, is the, the benefit of mm -hmm. outsourcing editing. Uh, have you guys ever had any clients actually comment on editing and, and suggesting that you didn't edit your own images? Not, not even close. No. Not even close. Um, um, but a we're, resounding we're, no. Yeah, I, I will probably talk about this a little bit more in, um, next week about the whole workflow aspect of it. But I do, I don't have photographers edit um, actually categorize. That that is an option for photographers edit. But I, I, uh, I just categorize. It takes me five minutes um, to actually go through really quickly to categorize images, and in doing so, I'll, I'll look. I'll just I'll look through them myself, make sure I'm satisfied with them. There's any glaring things that. It might be one or two that might need a gradient filter to 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 darken up one side of the, of the image that makes me a little more satisfied. But it, but if if I can, I, I know by going through them real quick, but just but just to categorize them myself, that that uh, that these look great. You know, like like uh, if if I'm satisfied with them, and I'm way more pickier than my client, then mm -hmm. then, then my client will have no idea. You know, mm -hmm. so and a lot and a lot of times, in fact, I told you about this a couple of days ago. I looked at some. I look at I look. At, I like some of these weddings. I'm like, the, they, you guys edit them better than I could. And, and, and some, uh, you know, I'm like, I am blown away. And I, you know, like, I'm like, wow. You know, so, so sometimes I'm like, wow, I not only save time, but they did a better job than I could have done, which is which is definitely saying something. So. We're gonna clip that that little twenty <laughs> second bit there and push it out as a commercial. Thanks for that. Rich. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Just don't make him watch himself on video. Or, or... Listen, just listen. <laughs> I can't listen to myself. He hears himself on video and he's like, <laughs> "How do you live with me?" <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Oh, to that point, I have to tell you the story. This is so hilarious, and then we'll finish up. I've, I've got one more question for you, but. 
speaking of how people's voices sound, I was walking into Walmart yesterday. I'm going to go pick up some groceries or, or whatever. And, and I'm getting ready to walk into Walmart and I hear somebody, it was actually a Walmart employee. I'm, I'm, so I'm still outside the building. I'm about to walk in. There's a Walmart employee, maybe 25 yards or 30 yards or so from me that says, in this really weird kind of buzzy high pitched voice says, hi, for, for a long time, maybe draws it out and kind of your maybe, maybe um, stereotypical Southern way uh, with a bit of a heavy accent. But it was so high pitch and buzzy sounding that I literally almost reached up to my ear to slap my ear because I, I like it was that same sensation that I get like when there's a mosquito right nearby. <laughs> <laughs> and this is coming from somebody's voice like that. That was the sound that was, of their voice. Anyway, I know it's totally wow. random. That's so funny. I, I literally like in my in my mind had that like that split second like, like right like, before oh, you do yeah. something. Okay, I'm about yeah. to raise my literally raise my hand up and slap at my ear because it sounds it feels like I'm there's a bug next to my ear and it was somebody saying hi with their, <laughs> like, their southern like accent. Thirty yards away. Wow, that's like, <laughs> that's like a superpower. It's like a mutant. Superpower. It was so. <laughs> it was the weirdest thing. I had to text my kids about it too. And, and <laughs> um, it, was just, it was it was so funny, but that's um, crazy. I want to ask you very quickly, and, and I know that we're we're kind of running out of time here, but it, it, um, ironically, that one of the most important elements of this conversation has to do with how to communicate your style. It's one thing to know your style, um, and that, that's honestly that's a that's a point of uh, difficulty for some photographers that are getting started with photographers. That is, they're not even quite sure what their style is, or if they do, they don't know how to communicate it effectively. Mm -hmm. uh, Rich, you seem to have a pretty clear idea of what you want. But how do you go about effectively communicating? I mean, this is this is probably the most important element of outsourcing or delegation, really just being a manager in general, mm -hmm. um, is learning how to communicate what you want to, whether it's your in-house assistant or a, a third party company, communicating effectively what you want. I mean, uh, and, and total kind of transparency here. This is something that I have to work at on an ongoing basis with when I'm working with Haley is if I ask her to do something or to to implement something as far as our digital marketing strategy, if if I assume that she understands what I mean versus actually breaking it down very, very clearly, we can run into some trouble. And that's mm -hmm. the case anytime you're working with a team member or a third party um, company or whatever the case, you've got to be able to communicate effectively and you can't assume that they can read your mind. Yeah, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So to that point, how do you guys, how have you figured out to most effectively communicate what you want in an editing style with Photographer's Edit? Well, I mean, let's, um, Photographer's Edit has kind of figured this out as far as like, um, instead of using words, pitch, <laughs> a picture is worth a thousand show, words. Show right? them. Yeah, yeah. Show them. So, uh, so like the great thing about, about Photographer's Edit that I have enjoyed doing is that, that you have you basically have a um, have a, a profile or preference um, and um, and but you can always update it um, as you as the photographer grows or they feel like they need to give more feedback. But the biggest thing is just to edit them, edit a few like you know five ten photos and then upload them um, because so you show the original photo and then your edited photo and then um, and then you um, so. And and then like photographers that will just like they'll walk they'll walk me through it and they'll say hey do you want, do you prefer warm photos cool photos uh, neutral photos and selective uh, color so, so like, <laughs> no, no 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 that is not an option <laughs> <laughs> welcome guys <laughs> no, um, and so um yeah you are you are uh, um it, it, so it's been great it's been great so uh so. To me, that's been the most effective thing. So, like, I, I don't have to truly. I, I know looking at my photos, and um, um, the photographer's edit even looks at my photos, and they can just see that, like, I, I prefer more neutral. It's not, it's not warm. Like, if, if it's going to be in anywhere, it's going to be neutral or slightly warm on the warmer side. But that's just my style. Mm -hmm. um, but, but uh, I, 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 I tell, I send them examples. Then I. Kind of explain a little bit. Um, y'all, y'all ask the right questions. I uh, then I, I basically mm -hmm. just answer it, and and uh, you kind of walk us through, it, walk me through it. And so, and again, if I if I get the images back, I'm like, oh, they kind of I, they misconstrued it. I can just go back in and uh, and re-edit or communicate better, or or oh, I didn't tell them this or that, 
and then uh, it's just it's just easy. It's just easy yeah. that way. So and yeah. just hone, hone the process. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and we do have. Um, I'm Rich. Maybe you've used this before. We have a really cool little feedback system in place that um, when you get an order back, you can just click on the appropriate emoji depending on how oh, yeah. you're feeling about the oh, order, yeah. and it takes you to a feedback page, and it actually lets you get very, very, very specific about, hey, um, I, I love this order, but the let's just say the contrast was a little bit too low. And I, I right. need you to improve that. So that's a processing issue. And this is in my my editing style, my profile. This is what where I pointed out that I want a high contrast. And you guys didn't quite follow that. Here are a couple of examples mm -hmm. and request a redo. And we can usually have a fresh Lightroom catalog back to you with updated Lightroom catalog back to you within 24, 48 hours, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but the, the visual representation is so, so important. And I'm glad that you point that out, Rich. Um, it is one thing for a photographer to say, hey, I want a, uh, let's, let's go with high contrast. I want high contrast. That literally can mean a hundred different things to a hundred different photographers. Um, so in addition to getting the verbal or, or text written instructions from you, um, we that the first thing that we do actually is, is request a visual example or a series of visual examples from a wide variety of lighting scenarios so that we get a good idea of how you process those images. Then we request the Lightroom preset, your your favorite color Lightroom preset, kind of your baseline finish for your images that you normally apply to your images. We apply that up front before we begin processing. So you can upload that into your account so that we can utilize that. And then um, and then we do request those those instructions or preferences, white balance, contrast, brightness, et cetera. And, yeah. Can you guys hear my kid? I'm so sorry. Is, is, is that who that, is, is that is? Oh, that that. I'm so sorry. I'll be, they opened the door and decided to just sing. So this I, is real I, life. I, this is real life, people. Yeah, I'll be right back. This, this, that's yeah. why I'm like, I'm trying to listen to you. I'm like, it's it's very faint. It's not like super loud. No, <laughs> okay, no. well, that's just for your entertainment. That was um, okay. so. So uh, really, yeah, well, okay. really, so really sorry. not a big deal, and 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 I uh, I needed to stop rambling anyway. So this no, it's is good. This, no, kids have been reprimanded. We're good. Okay, <laughs> it's this is a good ending point though, and and I appreciate you guys sharing your perspective and a little bit of the philosophy. Maybe just in closing, and and we'll literally end with this. We have a couple of minutes. Um, maybe you could just share briefly the the benefits that you've experienced, and and maybe they speak for themselves, but. Uh, mm -hmm. Just from your personal experience, what have the benefits been, and maybe contrast that with times that um, that you were handling your own editing. Uh, this is my favorite question of the whole thing like, because yeah, take it away, take it away. I'm just gonna do it. I'm <laughs> do just gonna it. do it. Just do it. So okay, time, which for us has very tangibly resulted in more money, um, and the reason that is, it's not as much what we would have thought necessarily, but. Um, yes, we have more time to network and yes, we have more time to um, do those proactive tasks that grow our business, like meetings with wedding uh, vendors and things like that and growing relationships. Rich prints these really beautiful brochures and he goes and he delivers them to different venues in person, has a great time with the, you know, the vendor, the venue owner and those kinds of things. So there's more time for that. But there's also been um, more time for Rich, Rich's side hustle with a local magazine where he's been able to take on photo shoots um, throughout the week, throughout the week, when I normally would be editing that have not only paid off, um, we've paid off wait, all wait. of our debt, except our home. Uh, now we didn't have like credit card consumer debt, like not crazy, like not crazy stuff, but we had um, a couple of lingering, like a student loan and a, um, like a home equity line of credit. We paid off our car with this side hustle. We also paid for a vacation and we're saving for, you know, so it's been very, very tangible for us in the way that, because if we had been editing all of our own weddings, there's no way he would have had time for this side hustle, which means that we wouldn't have been able to pay down the debt at, uh, on, on the um, schedule that we did as quickly mm -hmm. as we did, nor would we have been able to book this Alaskan vacation that we're going to be taking uh, this coming summer. These just aren't things that would have been feasible for us, you know, you know, when we weren't using photographer's edit. So for me, it's been a direct very exciting result of using edit. Um, and so it's just been a huge win-win. I know I sound like yeah, an well, advertisement, but I can't, I yeah, can't I mean, help it. it. It's true. Yeah. So. And, really and uh, again, like um, as you get older um, and I hate to be this person, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be this person, but, but like, I, um, you don't, know, you don't, know, you value time more. You just value time more because like, yeah. cause you understand like, in fact, I was I was listening to a podcast even today. Um, this is not as morbid as it sounds, but literally, it's a TED talk called called Dying Well, 
and um, and where it's basically just a series of of uh, of of people who are literally dying, who are like writing these 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 letters, um, um, or, yeah. or 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 making these TED talks, and it just when, when you listen to someone who literally has like they know, they know that they they may have a month, they may have less than a year. But when you just like listen to like, hey, how how valuable time is to them, and then and what they wish they had done or 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 whatnot, mm-hmm. you realize like you have been given a gift every day as, as a gift, and it's so incredibly uh, crazy how often we have to be reminded that because again we get into the routine of life, um, and uh, but like when, once you like hit like forty, when you hit a certain stage in your life, you. You you realize how quickly your kids are growing. You realize how fast their um, like their preferences are going, and like mm-hmm. the time that you could have your kids on your shoulders or do this um, and play like this with them is is gone. Like you realize like hey, you don't have all the time in the world that you thought you did as a mm-hmm. kid. You know, but as a young adult, as a kid, you think there there is like I'm gonna live forever. But as as, but as time progresses you understand how valuable time is. And that is the biggest thing for me is that I have, we have, we have gathered more time. And so time for experiences, time for family, time for this, time for mm-hmm. that, um, that, that again, like, let, let's just say, let's just say this. When you're on your deathbed, you will not be one wishing that you have spent more time at your desk editing. You will be wishing that you were doing more things with your family um and and, Mic and, drop. What, and what that you know what I'm saying like 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 ultimately that's that's um yeah. that's 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 it you know mm-hmm. so um so I mean like and that's what photographers that it kind of does for us so yeah well and and I, I think we will end on that note and in some who may be watching will notice that Haley's not with us anymore I think there were some technical <laughs> issues with her connection again we, so we offended her she's like what? <laughs> I'm not gonna live forever I'm out of here. <laughs> No, but in all seriousness, Rich, um, I, very, very well spoken, and Heather as well, and I appreciate you guys sharing. And 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 honestly, there's nothing to add to that. So we'll just end on that note. Beautifully, beautifully said. Um, just for those listening in, a reminder that you can listen to this episode. I'm sorry, for those watching, you can listen to this episode at BocaPodcast.com. That's B-O-K-E-H podcast.com. And um, this episode would go out later this evening, probably about five or six or so Eastern. And uh, for those of you listening on the podcast, we do these Workflow Wednesday episodes live on Facebook every week, uh, or most every week anyway. And uh, you can go to uh, facebook.com slash photogs edit, P-H-O-T-O-G-S-E-D-I-T. And um, 2 p.m. Eastern is when we go live. So thank you guys so much for making time uh, to have this conversation today, for sharing a little bit. Next week, we'll be back and we'll kind of dive into the actual process of using photographers edit what that workflow actually looks like tangibly we'll do some screen sharing and um, rich you can talk a little bit about your workflow yeah. uh, uploading images prepping and uploading and then getting them back and uh, uh and actually right before that and we'll link to this in the show notes at noon eastern next wednesday we're going to be doing a live webinar uh separate separate uh, broadcast but a live webinar that will walk new users and those um, maybe that have, have used photographers edit for a little bit and just need a little bit of clarification through the workflow at Photographer's Edit. And that's going to be at noon Eastern. So we'll make sure to link to that in the show notes as well. Thank you guys again. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful Wednesday. And thank you to everyone listening and watching for joining us. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Yeah, thank you Great so much. Great to talk to you, Nathan. Yeah, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Boca Podcast. Will you let us know what you thought by leaving a review of the podcast in iTunes or the Apple Podcast app? And I'd love to hear from you personally with your thoughts about the podcast and maybe suggestions about future topics and guests for the show. My email is nathan at photographersedit.com. The Boca Podcast is brought to you by Photographers Edit, custom image editing for the wedding and portrait photographer. Visit photographersedit.com.